All right, guys, welcome to a Cleveland Moto comparison between two bikes that we get asked about a lot in the shop. Once people have made the decision to get a Vespa scooter, once they've kind of said, this is what I want in my life, I want to own one of these things, it does come down to this, this moment in the, in the shop, usually, where people who've never ridden a bike before have to make a decision about, well, what, what am I going to buy? Where, where are we at? what is the right bike for me and it can be overwhelming and when you get into the shop there's a lot of this we call it paralysis by analysis where people are going to sit there and they're going to try to digest every website or every little brochure item uh, all the way down what i'm going to cover today in this video is the basic six or seven things that you need to be aware of when you're making a decision to go between these two bikes on our right, we have a Vespa Sprint 150. And on our left, we have a Vespa Yacht Club GTS 300. Now, both of these are special editions or versions of their base model. On the right, we have the 150, and on the left, we have the 300. Now, in Vespa lore, going back into the 60s, you're going to know or you're going to hear about people referring to bikes as small frames and large frames. And that's because Vespa decided in the 60s to introduce a smaller version of their bike for smaller uh, customers, for smaller riders, and for people who didn't need the large size bike. So we had Vespa small frames back then and we have Vespa small frames today. We have Vespa large frames then and we have Vespa large frames today. So in today, when you go into the motorcycle shop, you go into the scooter shop and you're talking about getting a Vespa, the first thing that you need to determine is are you going to buy a small frame? Or are you going to buy a large frame? Now, in the American market, the small frames are going to come as a 50cc or a 150cc. The large frames are only going to be available to you as a 300cc. Now, in the European markets, they have large frames that are available as small as 125cc for learner legal uh, reasons and for restricted licenses. But just remember for the American market, 50 cc's, which we don't talk about much here because they're very, very slow, 30 miles per hour or so, we're going to start with the 150s, the small frames, and we're going to then talk about the 300s, the large frames. The basic difference between the two bikes, as you can see right here, is the size. We're talking about the actual dimensions of the bike, the size of the bike. A common misconception is that the small frame Vespa, the Primavera or the Sprint, has a lower seat height than the 300. That is not true. It might feel like it's true, but it's not. According to Vespa's own website, according to the data they're putting out, both of these bikes have a 31 inch seat. Now what is interesting is there is a lowering device for the Vespa small frame. It works on the Primaveras, it works on the Sprints, and that will lower the seat height on a Vespa an uh, inch and a half or so. And it does make a difference. You will feel it going back and forth between a bike that is equipped with a seat lowering device or a bike that is not, you will feel the difference in the height of the seat. But keep in mind, anybody who tries to tell you, oh, well, you're five foot four, you should probably get a small frame as opposed to a large frame. They're not giving you the real deal here. What is more important between these two bikes is their weight. We're talking about the difference between a bike that weighs 258 pounds and a bike that weighs 348 pounds. So the small frame, the 150, that's a 258 pound vehicle. The large frame bike is a 348 pound vehicle and that's 90 pounds and that does make a difference. Remember, if this is your first two wheeled vehicle, you might decide that that 100 pounds or so is important to you. Now. Let's get into the motor and the power of the bike because that really is the biggest factor for me. The small frame or the Primavera or the Sprint is going to have a top speed, according to Vespa, of around 62 miles per hour. And that is a really, I mean, it feels very comfortable at 62 miles per hour. It doesn't feel like it's working too hard. Remember, this has that Italian green engine technology I get. It's a three valve motor, one intake valve and two exhaust valves. And this bike has no problem getting up to its 62 mile per hour top speed. We have tested it and it does absolutely fine using 87 octane fuel. So it does make it an affordable bike to run around on. Vespa publishes on their website a miles per gallon rating of around 98 miles per gallon. Our testing has found that our customers are getting around 108 miles per gallon. So that's a very efficient bike. This is an extremely fuel efficient scooter. There's enough room under the seat for a full face helmet. That's pretty nice. 
Um, it's a very, very easy bike to live with. Now, in this bike, 62 miles per hour, are you gonna really wanna take that on the freeway? So that's a decision you need to make when you're considering going between the small frame and the large frame, the Primavera or the 150 and the 300. Now that is a thing that, that does mean a lot when we're here in the showroom and we're talking to people, interviewing them and trying to find out what their needs are. Also remember if you're gonna be riding this bike two up, which means there's gonna be two American sized adults on this vehicle. Now will it still go 62 miles per hour? Will it be able to pull you up the hill that you drive up and down all the time capably? Now that's the thing you're gonna to wanna to take into consideration because this bike is advertised at about 14 horsepower and about nine uh, pounds feet of torque. The 300 on the other hand is 21 horsepower and about 16 and a half foot pounds of torque. And there's an HPE version coming out of the 300 right now that is going to be even higher, something more like 24 and change horsepower. So the 300 is about to get a facelift and a kick in the pants. So that also might be a game changer for you because remember this bike is advertised as having a top speed of around 80. And I can tell you from personal experience that these bikes will do 80 with no problem whatsoever. It is also extremely capable of cross country touring. Our friend Bagel Donahue has run a Vespa GTS across America countless times. He's proven that this bike is a capable long distance performer. And if you do wanna take longer trips and you're looking at a motorcycle substitute, this is an excellent motorcycle substitute. Uh, a skilled rider can get away from you in the twisties on a Vespa GTS 300. Important thing to think about when we're looking at the two bikes as well is our fuel. How much fuel are we gonna have with us? What is our range? Maybe that's an important thing to you. The small frame, the Primavera and the Sprint are advertised as having about a 2.1 gallon fuel tank, whereas the GTS is advertised as having a 2.2 gallon fuel tank. Now, in both of these cases, when the gas gauge says empty, you still have a little over a half a gallon left in the bottom of the bike. So the gas gauges are very conservative. I have found with my GTS that when the gas gauge says empty and I go in to put gas in it, I can almost never put more than a gallon and a half into the bike. Same holds true with the Primavera. It's very rare that I can put more than a gallon and a half into the bike when it says that the bike is empty. So that 70 miles per gallon they're quoting us for a GTS, I found it's more about 75 and this 98 miles per gallon here on the Primavera. So our range is potentially 200 miles on this and potentially 160 miles or so on this. Now, range is not really something that most of the buyers that come into the shop are really, really concerned about. They're gonna use these things more for fun. So I wouldn't get too hung up on that number. I don't think it's as important. Remember that this is a four valve motor. A four valve motor is going to be more efficient in most applications than a three valve motor, just because the amount of breathing that the motor does do. And we are picking up that little extra bit of horsepower too in the GTS. The GTS is bigger. If you are riding it with two people, you are going to be a lot more comfortable on that GTS. The GTS has the fold out foot pegs in the back for the passenger. That helps keep the passenger's feet away from your feet. When you're sitting at a red light or you're pulling away from a red light, there's not this uh, interface between yours and the passenger's feet that could be getting in your way, making you stumble or have something less than a comfortable experience. So that's a neat feature on the GTS. The GTS doesn't have as deep of a storage area under the seat, but it is longer. So if you're the type of person that wears a full face helmet and you wanna put that helmet under the seat, you will have a hard time doing that with the GTS. The GTS is more accommodating to the small, shorty, or skid lid style helmets. The GTS storage area is longer, but not deeper. It is shallow and longer. Everything is upscaled on the GTS. Even the, if you look on both of these bikes, you'll see that they both have factory color matched top cases. And you'll notice that the one on the the Sprint is smaller than the one on the GTS. So it's just a little bit of a scaled down version. We're talking about something, it's minor, it's the difference between like 32 liters and 37 liters. But just the same, remember that everything is scaled down a little bit on the small frame. Two people, two large people, I'm you know six foot tall, over 200 pounds. I have no problem with my wife and I being on that GTS and having tons of room, being very, very comfortable for any kind of distance traveling, even on the freeway. On the Sprint, it is much tighter. 
So we're not going to try to get on the freeway, two of us, on this bike. Um, it is more for neighborhood use. It is not going to be as comfortable for us to be two of us on the freeway. Now, safety. Both of these bikes, as of recently, they've upgraded the 150 and the 150 now has 12 inch wheels. And that's a really nice thing because for years our 150 cc Vespas had 10 inch wheels and then they went to an 11 inch wheel which made getting tires a little more difficult for the front of these bikes. Then now we're finally at a standard universal 12 inch wheel and there are hundreds of tire options available for 12 inch wheels. The other thing that's nice is both of these bikes have ABS. ABS on a scooter Keep in mind that ABS is going to be scooter ABS. So it's not going to be a multi-channel uh, type ABS system. It is going to be literally to keep, the, to keep that front wheel from skidding and locking up on you in a rainy or slippery gravel uh, wet leaves situation. The ABS brakes on these bikes, works. they work very, very well. And the systems that they're using are excellent. Now, in the 300, they're going to up the game a little bit higher. And they have what's called ASR. And ASR is the Piaggio traction control system. And what that's doing is that's actually measuring the wheel speed versus of the two wheels, the front wheel and the back wheel. And if that back wheel is going faster than the front wheel, it's going to retard the power to the motor to keep those speeds equal. And if you ever want to see what that's like, simply put the bike on the center stand and try to rev it. Whereas a bike without ASR will just happily rev, whereas a bike with ASR will not. It will stop and it will not let you spin the back tire if the front wheel is not moving. Now, you have, there is an ASR button on the handlebar so you can turn the ASR off. And uh, just like the IGET, ASR does stand for something. This is a great trivia question for your friends. It's Antriebsschlupfregelung. And uh, yeah, because they had to use the German word for that one because apparently the Italian translation couldn't be crushed down into ASR for the uh, Antriebsschlupfregelung. So that's what you're going to find on the 300cc is that extra traction control, which is a really nice feature for people who, if you're going to be traveling around on cobblestone, if you're going to be traveling around in, you know, moist, riding conditions. It's very British out today. So that's where the Vespa 300 is going to shine. It has more safety built into the bike. It's not an option. It comes on every Vespa 300 you buy. There are many versions of the Vespa 300. There are many versions of the Vespa 150. Not just the ones we're showing you today. Go to your local dealer, check them out because they always have limited editions. They always have you know, the Primavera, the Sprint, the 946, those are all just versions of the 150. In the 300, we have the GTS IE, we've got the Super, we've got the GTV, we've got the Sigiorno, which is a six days uh, commemorative bike. There's touring editions of both the 150 and the 300, which come with built-in luggage, front, rear, and windshields. So... Vespa does give you a lot of options when you're looking at an actual Vespa product. Now keep in mind, all Vespas are Piaggios, but not all Piaggios are Vespas. Vespa denotes that it is a steel-bodied bike with the smaller wheels and it's made in Italy. Whereas Piaggio is a giant company that makes all kinds of different models and makes of vehicles and equipment. The Vespa itself is always going to be the scooter. The Vespa is going to be what you think it is. It's the Italian word for wasp. And if you look at these vehicles, you will see that in the design. We have been dealing with Vespas. I personally have been dealing with Vespas since I was a little kid, and I absolutely love them. What has happened is they have sort of moved forward with the times. They went from being just the cheapest vehicle you could buy, the cheapest little two-wheeled vehicle you could purchase, to being now a flagship item, an item that you can be really proud of, an item that's going to give you far more performance than the ones from 20 or 30 years ago. So definitely do your homework. Go check them out. Sit on them. I know that we talked about the seat heights being identical, but this bike is wider and heavier. This bike is narrower and lighter. Your feet may be closer to the ground on the small frame simply because the bike is narrower. So check the bikes out. And remember, you can lower the 150 if you need to. Talk to your local Vespa dealer. Go check them out. If you want to come to our shop and see them, just go to our website, clevelandmoto.com. We have all of our Vespas listed up there. 
You can also give us your comments. If you think you, uh, if you think I missed something, or something you wanted me to cover and I didn't, simply go to the comments section below and fill it out, write your uh, comments in there and I'll address them. I do answer all those comments. And remember, ride fast and take chances.